Hey guys, welcome to the Plant Tito Earl channel and I'm your Plant Tito, Plant Tito Earl and election season is upon us here in the Philippines. So I myself did a little poll about a month ago. But don't worry, this isn't politically related. If you want to find out what it is, let's get it started. So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to the Plant Eater Earl channel where we talk anything and everything about plants. And I'm your Plant Eater, Plant Eater Earl. And like what I said earlier, I already did. I already did. I made some poll questions before on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, nga pala if you haven't. Uh, that's Plant Eater Earl. I'm also on Facebook. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please, 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 please do subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, comment uh, later on. You'll find things for sure. You'll find things that you want to comment about or things that you'd want to ask. Feel free to use the comment button. Share this video if you'd like it. Uh, hit the like button if you like it. I conducted these uh, informal polls. Please take note of that word, informal. I conducted a poll on Instagram. I asked uh, you know my followers a couple of questions. Most of them were yes or no or this and that questions. And then a couple of uh, essay type questions to get more qualitative answers. These questions, some of them were actually very hard hitting. These were the questions that some people were not uh, were afraid to ask only because they have very contentious or they're very contentious topics or their answers can be quite controversial sometimes. And now before I continue, um, again, I'm gonna stress this again. This is an informal poll. Uh, please take all of these poll results with a grain of salt. And again, they're mostly opinion or experience based. They, some of them may be fact based, but most are based on the experiences of our fellow plant parents here in the Philippines mostly. Just also to give you an idea of who, uh, how we'd call it in research, the sample is 46.4% are between the 25 to 34 age range, followed by the 35 to 44 age range uh, at 24%. Sorry, my I have my numbers right in front of my screen. So from time to time, I'll be looking, I'll be looking down. Yun. and then most of them are 62% are female, 63 rather, 62.8 are women, 37.2% are men. Like, at least that's based on their profile. So this does not make this a gender issue. Anyway, so yun, just so that you have an idea of what kind of sample set I was working with. And again, I posted these on Instagram stories. So those who answer them most likely are my followers on Instagram. And on average as well, for all of the questions, average responses per question is a whopping 180 responses. So that's a pretty good number, I must admit. So there, so let's get it started. That intro was very long. <laughs> let's start with the first set of questions. These are more personal questions just to get to know, you know what types of plant parrots are out there. First question is, is your current work or business directly related to plants? 83% said no. So, I myself belong in that 83%. Next question, do you tend to your plants within your designated work hours? 65% uh, said yes. 35% no. I would understand siguro na yung mga no. Sila siguro yung they have to be physically present in the office. For example, those in the medical field. Uh, when you're working, you're really in the hospital, in the hospital or in the clinic. You can't really tend to your plants uh, while you're there, right? But for a lot of us who are fortunate enough to be working from home, like myself, I can squeeze it in between, you know, long days of meetings and doing presentations and doing lots and lots of work. Next question is, is shopping for plants stress-inducing or relieving? 78% said that they find it very relieving. I myself find it very relieving. It's my own version of retail therapy. It's good for some of you, your retail therapy before it came in the form of, you know, let's say clothes or shoes or toys or gadgets and whatnot. But now, because of the pandemic, you know, things have changed. And plants na yung naging ano natin, source of retail therapy. Meanwhile, 22% said it's stress-inducing. And I, I, I want to believe this is because Siguro they've had, you know, bad experiences with sellers, maybe, that could be one. Or with the plants themselves, when they got it, hindi siya maganda pala, or it died on them. This set of next questions I'm going to, uh, uh, that I ask, are about plant care, or the kind of care that we can give to our plants. Do you think your current environment is ideal for growing plants? 73% said yes, so that's a whopping majority. 
Uh, when I say majority, at least in these poll results, uh, I'd want to say that at least 70% or higher, that's already the majority. Maybe because they already have it to begin with, or in their journey as plant parents, they were able to, you know, make the environment more appropriate or more um, suitable for growing or more ideal for growing plants. Uh, next question. Overall, do you provide the same kind of care to all of your plants? 65, uh, rather, 35% said yes, and 65%, almost a majority, said no. This actually is very reasonable. I would understand why those who said yes said yes. Uh, maybe similar lang yung types of care that, uh, that their plants need. So it's, it's, it's a similar type of care that they give to their plants. Meanwhile, if you're like me who has different kinds of plants, each one of them has different sets of care rules. So I can't really follow a, a single rule or a single care type to apply to all of my plants. So that's completely fine. It really depends on what kinds of plants that you currently have in your collection. Next is, when learning about plants, do you mostly rely on either research or experience? And this is rather almost 50-50. Uh, research, those who said research said 40%. And those who said experience said 60%. I fall in between. I rely heavily on research, especially on the pre part, or let's say when I don't know much about the plant yet, I hit Google, I ask around how to take care, I ask the sellers who I buy a plant from, I take it from there, and then I base it on my experience already. Although I'm leaning more towards research, uh, more than experience. For plant treatments and amendments, do you mostly use uh, organic or chemical? 67% said that they mostly use organic and 33% said chemical. And for me personally, I use both. There's completely nothing wrong with using chemicals. Uh, but if, let's say, you're the type of person who would want, or who prefers organic or who wants to live an organic lifestyle, that's also completely fine. It's really a matter of uh, who you are as a person or what you prefer. Now, we move on to, I've been mentioning the pandemic earlier, so let's go back to that a little bit. More pandemic-related questions. When the pandemic is over, do you think you will take care? That's the operative word in this question because this next question is similar. When the pandemic is over, do you think you will take care of plants more or less than you do now? This is also very polarizing. 57% said they'd be taking care more uh, they'd be taking care of plants more after the pandemic, if ever we do survive it. And then 43% said less. And in relation to that, similar question, when the pandemic is over, do you think you will buy plants? Again, buy. Previous one was take care, this one is buy. When the pandemic is over, do you think you will buy plants more or less than you do now? And the the polarizing result out of everything, out of all of the questions that I asked. 50-50. <laughs> Honestly, me too. I, I haven't decided yet. It depends really on how, uh, on what would be required of me uh, in my work once the pandemic is over, how things will change. Now we're going to talk about the plant business as a whole. The next sets of questions will be dealing with these because these are the more hard-hitting questions some of them are the questions that, you know, some people are afraid to ask because they might be bashed or anything like that. Let's start with this question in relation to the plant business as a whole. Do you think plants are a good business prospect or source of income? And majority said yes. 83% said yes, so, uh, while only 70% uh, said no. And I would definitely agree to that. <laughs> uh, plant sellers are my favorite kinds of sellers. <laughs> Do you think plant sellers should always publish prices in sale posts? And thankfully, thankfully, a majority also answered said yes, 96%. Because that's, this is my opinion, not a fact, but an opinion. Why are you afraid to uh, show or display the price of your plant when you know it's justified? But if you think it's reasonably priced, given, let's say, whatever effort that you had to go through, whatever investment you may have had, both financial and otherwise, on that plan, and you think that the price that you're giving it is reasonable enough, then why are you, why are you afraid to show it? Why are you afraid to display it? Right? 
That's just it, eh. I mean, but kama to tapot, but kama hihiya na display ng price ng plant for it. I think that's a very reasonable price. Next, do you think plant prices are dictated more by supply or demand? I'll be dealing th- with this more later, because uh, I have a another question, a more qualitative question in, with regards to this. But 36% said supply dictates the price more, uh, 64% said demand. Next sets of questions. This time, specifically when it comes to the plant business, um, these questions will deal with selling or ha- how plants are sold. Generally, and I'm only talking about online here, ha? it's a different experience altogether when we're talking about on ground. The usual way of posting or selling plants online is, you know, we post it on whatever selling platform is available. Just post it there and just wait for the customers to come in. Promote as you go along, but generally that's the traditional digital way of posting or selling plants. Meanwhile, these three others have evolved from there. There's one, live selling, wherein sellers go uh, go on a live stream to showcase their plants that they're selling, discuss everything that they need to do about, uh, they need to discuss about that plant, and then just wait for the comments to come in for someone to say mine. For example, generally mine yung pinakaginagamit. That signifies the customer's intent of buying that plant. Next is uh, the mine game via plant drop. Now this is fairly similar to the first one that I mentioned, yung post merely posting it. However, this one comes in the form of a batch upload of plants. They usually sellers usually schedule this on a particular time. Uh, wherein they will be releasing all of the plants that they will be selling for that particular sale and then paunahan ng mine sa, on the plant once it's posted. Uh, paunahan ng type ng mine or whatever code or whatever keyword that has to be used in order for this buyer to signify that they want to buy that plant. And the lastly, this is by far the most, I guess this is the most controversial out of the three that I'm going to mention today, plant bidding. Now, plant bidding, again, similar with the first one, you post your plant. However, you don't dictate the price. You just dictate a starting price and the incremental prices. And then the sellers, or rather the buyers, will be the ones to bid uh, for whatever price that they want to pay for that particular plant. Live selling, 72% found it agreeable. Uh, 28% said no, it's not agreeable, which personally I would belong to the yes. Because uh, sometimes it's very entertaining when you're watching a live stream. Because sometimes sellers do all sorts of gimmicks just to keep their audiences, their potential buyers, you know, hooked and stay on the live stream. And also ways to, you know, upsell their plans to make it more. Uh, inviting or convincing for the buyers to buy the plant. Next one is the mind game by a plant drop. 78% said yes, that they find it agreeable. 22% said no, they don't find it agreeable. I do understand the 22% who said no, because it's time pressured and especially if you're if, especially if it's a plant drop by a rather popular seller, it can be very challenging to get the plant that you want because others may also want that. And it's a matter of how fast you can type and how fast your internet connection is. And then last one, which is the most contentious or uh, plant bidding uh, and rather polarizing result here. 44% found it agreeable. 56% found it um, not agreeable. I would understand the yes, uh, those who find it agreeable. At least you're not the one who's setting the value for your plant. It's your buyers. Uh, who are setting the value. Let's say initially you'll have it, you're just thinking that you could price it at 500, but it turns out the plant is worth 5,000. And you didn't even know that to begin with. So that's a good way for you to, you know, increase the value without imposing it on the people. On the other hand, on the flip side of this, it's already been a contentious issue in the plant community wherein plant prices have been very, um, you know, unstable and Personally, I think that the bidding process, and this is just my opinion, is not helping out with that. Because again, the value is coming from the buyers. Because of these bidding processes, if someone just gets a sniff that, let's say, for example, a certain Anthurium is bidding for 10,000, 20,000, other, other sellers may follow suit. Because they saw that this plant can bid for as high as five digits, they jack up their prices unreasonably. And that's, that's why it's a very contentious topic, plant bidding. So I myself also am 50-50 when it comes to plant bidding. 
So there! Now, we move on to, since I mentioned earlier about plant prices, how crazy they have been, uh, especially during the pandemic. Well, let's talk about, uh, I asked a couple of questions about plant prices. First one, <clears throat> do you think plants should have SRPs or suggested retail prices? 65% said yes, they should have SRPs. Uh, 35% said no. And I have, fo- and I have follow-up questions uh, with regards to SRPs later on, to price regulation. Next price-related question. Do you think that plant prices can still go back to pre-pandemic levels? This is a va- very optimistic question, actually. 70% the majority said that yes, there's still a chance that it will go back to lower prices. Uh, 30% said no. So, you know, people are still hopeful. Because again, I guess... Uh, once the pandemic is over, uh, people will be going back to, let's say, some people may go back to their previous normals. Some will get stuck or will continue on with this new normal that they're living now. Or maybe even in the future, post-pandemic, there might even be a newer normal for them. Now, in relation to prices, still specifically about price regulation. Now, here in the Philippines, There is currently no regulating body or price regulating body in charge of, you know, regulating the prices of plants. That's why I asked earlier if you think that having an SRP is good. Generally, sellers are just self-regulating. I know of a couple of importers, importers who import from Holland, they have come up with, you know, price floors and ceilings for particular plants. So that's a way of self-regulating. It also promotes, you know, healthy competition. You're not just competing based on price. You're already competing based on quality. You're already competing based on the kind of service that the seller is giving. So that's actually a good thing. Price regulation can be a very good thing. Now, the first question is, do you think... Ah, this is one of those questions that, you know, people are afraid to ask because this is the government. The government. Uh, do you think there should be a government agency that will serve as a plant price regulating body? Uh, just take the question as it is. I'm not pointing to any particular uh, government agency. I'm not saying that it should be DTI or Department of Agriculture and whatnot. No. 49% said yes, there should be a government uh, price regulating body. 51% said no. And um, I don't want to get into this question so much because we're going to get political. And again, I mentioned earlier, I'm not a politi- I don't want to go into politics, especially now. Then it's election season. <clears throat> do you think there should be, uh, opposite to the previous question, do you think there should be a private organization that will serve as a plant price regulating body? Now this one is a little bit more skewed. Uh, 61% said yes, they would agree that there should be a private price regulating body. Uh, 39% said no. Um, the advantage is the man if, if you have a private organization is that they can be more technical about it, uh, meaning they can since they're a private organization, they will be able to devote more of their priorities to researching about the plant prices, for example, or knowing the trends of the market. Let's say you have a business entity there. It's like a plant stock exchange. Uh, however, since they're a private entity, they don't have as much enforcement power when it comes to this. That's just the downfall here. We're down to the last few questions. And this one is a very contentious question. This is fairly controversial as well. Uh, I I guess one of the most controversial questions that I had to ask. Do you think the current plant hype is just a trend? 64% said yes. 36% said no. Make what you want of it. Comment down below what your actions to this is. And in relation to that question, do you personally feel that people are just riding on the plant hype? Filipinos have this tendency that if it's uso, they'll go for it. Uh, trend jacking is what it's called uh, in social media specifically. Because other people are doing it, you're doing it. I have a question in relation to that. Our final question for this vlog actually later on. That will let you help decide on this question better. I'll leave it up to you. I, I have my own opinions about it. But they're very strong opinions. So I'll keep them to myself. I don't want to offend anyone. So I'll just keep those opinions to myself. So there, down to the last few questions. Uh, This is more qualitative. So this is no longer in a poll form. This is no longer a yes or no or this or that form when, you know, the respondents answered. This is 
I just let them type in. So, what do you think is the biggest factor that affects the price of plants? Then I ask them for just one, just one uh, factor, and then they can they were free to explain it. So I got the largest that got is in relation to my previous question, the height. This also includes influencers hyping the plants. Uh, 29% of respondents said that it's because of the hype. That's why there's this huge demand. Uh, there's this huge fluctuation of prices of plants. And I would agree to that. And the second most, uh, the second biggest factor, according to them, is demand. This is the more general term of hype. Hype was more specific. Hype still, sa- still has something to do with demand. But demand is the more you know, general scope of this category 23 percent of them a lot are getting into plants right now so there's a huge demand and that can heavily heavily skew the prices whether increase or decrease the price of a particular plant other you know reasons but not too many were um, um answering these importation uh this already has something to do with supply and uh, supply also was there, uh, it was mentioned, but not as much as demand. And now, we're down to the last question. And I think, out of all of this, out of all of these questions that I was talking about earlier, this would have to be the most important, but, and the first thing that you really have to ask yourself. What is your main reason for taking care of plants? Given the current times that we're facing, 30% said, because plants are providing stress relief. It gives that certain sense of relaxation, especially if you're living in the city and you're far from nature. At least you have your own slice of nature at home. That's one. This is a classic example. Whenever I'm really stressed at work, you know, there's just too much going on, I repot. Of course, the plants that just need to be repotted, I don't just repot on a whim as much as possible. Uh, Although I've done that before. I repot because I find it very relaxing. I find, you know, touching the soil, getting my hands dirty, some of you may not find that relaxing, but me personally, I do. I love working on my, on my plants. That's why I've been working. One of the things that has kept me preoccupied these past few weeks and months is my plant wall outside with the waterworks. Um, I find that very stress relieving because, you know, it gives me that. It makes me forget about problems. It makes me forget about the things that I have to worry about because my attention is just on my plants and that's it. Next to that is 18% said overall mental health. Stress relief is in relation to mental health, but I guess mental health overall. Because of the type of the various benefits that you can get with plants. They're very good for your uh, mental health and also for your physical health. Because there, there are plants who are natural air purifiers. So there's several benefits that you can get from plants. And then the third one is plant growth or care. Basically, they just enjoy caring for something. So I guess these are the plant parents who have that caring bone in them. Me, I would say that that bone is already starting to grow. You find that you know caring for something gives you that sense of purpose, right? which is in relation to the next one. It gives you a sense of responsibility and productivity because you have something that you have to do. Maybe because of the pandemic, your time was free. Uh, you, you get more free time. So you're looking for something to keep yourself, you know, uh, productive, keep yourself responsible. And plants can do that for you. And then this next one is interest or passion. It's always been, uh, for some of them who answered this, they qualified it as, it has always been in them to take care of plants or to have plants. They've been very passionate about it for quite some time. For other reasons, but not as many, uh, it's design. Uh, it's good for design or aesthetics. So if you're planning on decorating, they love, uh, plants can do that for them. Entertainment or distraction. Uh, provides a distraction for, you know, or they find it entertaining to have plants around. One said uh, it's because of the collection. They're just collectors and it just so happens that plants are their collections. And business or income. Um, again, it's a fairly lucrative, especially now, it's a fairly lucrative business. If you, At least if you know how to play your cards right. At the end of the day, out of all of these four questions that I, read, that I ask, really, it's this last one that you really have to think about. You have to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Uh, why am I taking care of plants? Why do I want to take care of plants? Quick anecdote in marketing, which again, that's what I do. 
whenever you want to launch campaign, you always have to answer the five H uh, the five W's and the H. Uh, your what, who, when, where, who, when, where, how. But sometimes the why is forgotten. The what would be, you know, what your objectives are. When do you plan to launch it? And how long do you want to plan to launch it? Where do I plan on launching this? Where do I plan on playing this campaign out? And where do I get the budget? Uh, what budget am I working with? Who are the people involved? How do I get this started? How do I get this rolling? How do I finish this? How do I measure the, the success rate? But sometimes you forget the why. The why is your reason. Why are you doing this? Why am I launching this campaign? Why am I taking care of plants? Is it because of the stress relief? Is it because I'm looking for another alternative for, for retail therapy? Is it because I want to design my place uh, in a greener way? You can have your own reasons and no one can dictate, dictate that on you. That will come from inside of you. You can gather as much answers about this question. But the only answer that should matter to you is your own why. So there, thank you so much for joining today. And I hope that you found these numbers, you know, quite entertaining. And you were given, you know, at least somehow an overview of how things are in the plant community right now. Things may change in the future. Things may be the same, who's to say. But as long as you know your why, why you're taking care of your plants, you're all set to go. Thank you so much, guys. And before I go, please do hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button as well if you found this video very helpful. And uh, if it answers your why. And comment down below the things that you would want to discuss. Share it also if you'd want to. And also follow me on Facebook and especially on Instagram because that's where I'm very, very active. And let's talk about plants there. So there, thank you so much, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.